of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. God said, don't be afraid of them. Look at what these people are doing. See, a confederacy is when someone wants to separate because just like in the confederate time when slavery, you had people that wanted slavery and people who didn't, and those who were confederates separated themselves and became rebels. This is what the confederate flag stands for. No matter what nobody tells you, it is a sign of rebellion, and the Bible says the sin of rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. See, you got to see this thing from the eyes of the Lord. You can't listen to all of this stuff out here. There's a reason for everything. And God is telling us not to conform to his people. He told Isaiah the, and, and the people of it and the children of Israel not to be like the other people. So what are the people of today doing? They running around with their pumpkins. And they're going into the stores and buying their Halloween candy so that they can celebrate that which gives worship unto the devil. As this month goes on, we may get into some of that because when you start studying it and seeing exactly what jack o lantern pumpkins stand for, when you see what the trick-or-treat stands for, the church has no business trying to imitate what the world is doing. But I told you before, and I'll tell you again, that the church is not going to stop the organized system out here because they make more money this time of the year than any other time of the year. So it's all about the money. So instead of trick or treat, don't do their trunk or treat. You think God's pleased with this? God sees right through it. Instead of a Halloween party, they don't have a hallelujah party, which is blasphemy against God. The Bible says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's more than just cursing. You understand? Anytime you rep misrepresent God and call something hollow that's not hollow, the Bible said, hollow be thy name. That is the name of the Lord, not hollow be this celebration that folks are coming up with and calling it something that appears harmless and innocent and just for the kids when in actuality it is witchcraft and it is destroying the souls of even the people in the church. Is everybody understanding this? Yes. Yeah. Verse 13 says, Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. God says, Fear him. You want to fear somebody? Fear the one who has the power to cast both your body and your soul into hell. Don't be afraid of these people who treat you funny because you're not doing what they do because you're not decorating your house like they decorate their house because you're not giving out candy or bible tracts or anything all october the 31st get away from here with that because they not trying to hear the gospel don't even waste your time handing somebody a track they don't want a track they want a three musketeers or a snickers bar they want a kit kat they don't want the gospel. They want a haunted house. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't play around with fire. Verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God says, you want to disobey? I'll become a stone of stumbling that causes you to stumble. Verse 15, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I 
and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, which are devils, you understand? And unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead instead of seeking after these wizards and witches and warlocks? Why don't you seek after the Lord instead of reading a horoscope? Instead of looking to the meteorologist, which is talking about Mother Nature, instead of Father God that created all of creation, do you understand the witchcraft that's going on? Ain't no such thing as Mother Nature. They're promoting their worship of the earth. They call it Mother Earth and Mother Nature and Gia. And that's where Earth Day and all of this other stuff is all about. It's not about replenishing the earth. It's about them worshiping the earth. That's what the whole green movement is about. Because they worship the earth. So they don't want to destroy the trees because they worship the trees. And if they worship in the trees, what in the world are they doing in people's living rooms? You understand what's going on? Verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If they don't pay attention or they want to come against this word that's, that's being brought forth, it's because they're in the dark. It doesn't matter if they're a Sunday school teacher or an apostle or a bishop or, the, or whatever they claim to be. They are in the dark. You will not get to heaven because you teach Sunday school or because you preach at, at the local church. You get to heaven when you are born again and your sins are washed under the blood and you repent and turn from your sins. It's not just enough to say, God, I'm sorry for what I did. You got to stop it. Cold turkey. That's when you see the blessing. Verse 21. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves. They shall fret themselves and curse, uh oh, the, and curse their king and their God and look upward. Verse 22, and they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. They're going to start worshiping the earth. Ain't that what's going on today? Isn't that what's going on today? Exactly what I just talked about. God said that they're going to curse the kings and the presidents, but then they're going to curse God too, and they're going to start looking to, to the earth, like Mother Earth. Then they're going to start looking to the moon and stars, and God said all they're going to get is trouble. So don't fall into this horoscopes and zodiac signs and all this other junk and all this other witchcraft that's going on. They got you looking to the moon and then looking to the sun to try to see what's going to happen in the future. That's called divining. The Bible says we are to look unto the Lord. The Lord will reveal to those his servants what's coming. And he's showing us what's coming. Judgment and wrath is what's coming because these people have turned their back on God with the laws that they're passing. They turned their back on God with the fact that they're parading all of this sexual promiscuity and sleeping with anything, man, woman, dogs, anything. It's all over the place. And then they're telling you that the earth created itself, that the weather got there because of a mother nature instead of a father God. This is some serious business. We had better start paying attention to what's going on and seeing that God is going 
to punish those who continually live ungodly. But his church, guess what? He's going to catch his church up in the twinkling of an eye. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the born-again believers all over this world that love Jesus Christ and are sick of the junk that they're getting. They're sick of this counterfeit Christianity. They're sick of this false prosperity gospel. They're sick of all of this stuff where people are saying, well, God just dis destined some people to go to heaven and some people to go to hell. These are all false doctrines being taught in the church today. Once saved, always saved. You don't go to heaven. You don't have the Holy Ghost unless you speak in, in tongues. All these false teachings and people are sitting in churches applauding that which is a twisting of the word of God. Those with God's spirit are those people who are willing to stand up and tell the truth and not back down when somebody tries to come at them with their false interpretations of scripture. Somebody that has the Holy Ghost is somebody who's going to teach you and preach to you and not ask for a dime for you. And it's going to line up with the word of God. Not somebody who's trying to take advantage of you. Not somebody who's telling you to go along to get along with society. Do you understand we live in a wicked place and it is time for the light to shine in the darkness and I will shine that light with the grace of God and not back down from those who question and those who want to sneer at and scoff at. Let's get into the scripture. You might learn something. Those of us who love God need to understand that it is time to be praying and seeking his face and turning away from our evil ways so that God can heal us and heal our land but this land is not going to be healed because this land is full of leaders in a congress that worships the devil you understand what I'm saying yes. you got some folks in there that claim they worship in God but just take a look at them listen to how they talk you know, and I'm not excluding nobody. Why? Because I've seen it time and time again where a candidate comes out claiming they're a Christian and you find out if you examine them close enough that they are not serving the God of the Bible. They either have a counterfeit Christ or they flat out worshiping the devil. Killing babies is of the devil aborting babies because you don't you didn't want to get pregnant you understand what I'm saying that is of the devil and this country is the only country in the books that has a law that allows the slaughtering of a child in the womb of its mother and we've been paying for it ever since Roe versus Wade and we've been paying for it ever since slavery and how many people were murdered during that time and we've been paying for it ever since they lied to the Indians and drove them off this land because they wanted that gold in those mountains. You understand what I'm saying? There is so much deception that people tend to ignore. They want to think that this nation is a Christian nation. If this nation was a Christian nation, then God would be the God of this nation. The only reason why God caused this land to prosper is because there are a few. He has a remnant here. And God is merciful. Even to the unrighteous, God has been merciful. So just because this nation has been so blessed doesn't mean that this nation started under the auspices of God because it didn't take long for prayer to come out of schools. It didn't take long for the schools to start making evolution a law where they teach your kids that the world started from a big bang instead of the world starting by the spoken word of God where the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. You understand? Wasn't no bang. It was God speaking these things into existence. And we got to stand against the walls of the devil and we have to educate and teach our kids because this is the time of the year when more kids get molested and kidnapped and murdered because they are sacrificing the babies of the Satan. There are many of these crazy people out here 
But guess what? You can't just tell them. Some of them are your lawyers. Some of them are your doctors, as we found out in Delaware a few years ago. These people have important titles behind their name, and some of them are your bishops, as we found out as well. Where is it safe for your kids to be? The safest place on earth is in the will of God. You understand? If your kids are right by God, and somebody puts their hand on them, Jesus said it is better than a millstone be tied about your neck and you be cast in the sea than to hurt one of these little ones. God is going to pay them back in spades. You understand what I'm saying? Don't play with fire. You will get burned. Don't play around with the gospel because there's an eternal fire that burns. Even though there are people that don't even believe in a heaven or hell, when they get there, and it ain't heaven, they'll know, and it'll be too late. Ask the rich man that opened up his eyes in hell. He couldn't even get one drop of water. You don't want to go there. You don't want your sin or your pride or anything to cost you to go to hell. What profit is it for a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Take heed to this message. They're coming strong like this. Because I don't want my family lost. I don't want those that are listening to me to be lost. So I have to tell you the truth. And not shy away from those who don't want to hear it. If they don't want to hear it, that's their choice. But for those that want to hear I guarantee you, if you listen and pay attention and make whatever changes you need to make in your life, God's going to bless you and you'll see the true riches of God, which is faith, joy, peace, love, those things that money can't buy. Those are the true riches, not the materialistic things of this world, which will lead to destruction. They're all going in the fire. Don't go with them. Don't go with them. Thank you for your time today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are faithful even in the midst of our struggles and our attacks. You are still faithful to be the God that you say you are, which is the triune God of the universe. And I thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy you've shed upon me, upon my wife and children, upon my family, and upon those whom I do not even know. I just thank you, God, that you've been so good to us, even though in time after time after time we have blown it in your presence. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Help us to, to be cleaned up. Help our minds to be sober and stable so that we don't continue to walk in the darkness that this world is feeding us with on a daily basis. Help us to live according to the truth. Help us to not waver from your precious word, which is the only thing that we have to hold on to is the promise that you sent your son, that he lived a sinless life, that he was virgin born, that he died on the cross for all of our sins, and that he rose from the dead in triumphant victory over death, hell, and the grave. And we believe and hold on to this promise and all of the promises you put in your precious word. Help us to cling to the truth of the gospel which revolves around the cross of Jesus Christ I pray God for your grace and mercy and empowerment that I may continue to live according to the truth and be a witness to this world that you are in fact the God that heals the God that saves and forgives and the God that restores and I thank you Lord and I ask for your mercy upon my family my children those that are here, my in-laws, and those that may hear this sermon, I just ask for your grace and mercy and that their ears will hear what the Holy Spirit has to say into the church 
and that they will pay no mind to what the devil